Let's talk rumors. Some rumblings. 49ers could be kicking the tires on Buda Baker or that he'd be a great. What do you think? What are you hearing? Well, Larry? okay. Buda Baker is supposedly going to be dealt. Supposedly he's going to be dealt for a day three pick. Yeah. Supposedly, according to CBS Sports, the Niners and the Colts are two of the three teams interested. Um, I think he's a perfect fit. I think when you look at the 49ers, the one of the, the, the primary need that we never talk about is that they don't have a free safety. Um, mm. watch them, both their guys, Jair and Talanoa, you know, uh, Talanoa's coming off an injury, but I think they're both strong safeties. Um, I, I look at, um, Jair as a guy who could play a little free safety grant, but he's more like a Tayshawn Gibson in that he's a productive interceptor, but he's not really covering anybody in down the field. So they need a coverage player down the field and a big time free safety. And Buda Baker is exactly that. And he's cheap. Uh, as far as the draft pick compensation, I believe, because he's a free agent at the end of the year, it would really be an, uh, kind of a win now, all in kind of a move. But, man, you've heard Bo uh, George Kittle talk about Buda Baker. I mean, there's a lot of respect there. This is one of the NFL's better free safeties. If you can get him for a fifth-round pick, you figure out a way to squeeze that contract in, I, I think I would do it. Yeah, whenever the Niners play the Cardinals, all they really do is talk about Buda Baker. They're like, look, you know, they're kind of rebuilding and they're not really there yet. But Buda Baker, it is just an honor and a privilege to compete against that man. He's the hardest playing person in the hardest playing player in the league. I mean, it's on and on and on. So, yeah, he'd fit right in the locker room. And I I, I, I want to know what the Nick Sorensen effect will be on the defense. Like, is he going to make this his own? He comes from Seattle for a long time. It, the last few years on the Niners, they've been really running a lot of split safety looks from Wilkes to D'Amico, the, the very end with Salah. Everything started in a split safety look, and then they would rotate after that. But they like to play a lot of quarters at the end. Wilkes didn't have a lot of success with it. Sorensen comes from Seattle. Are they going to get back to like single high stuff? In which case, yeah, they absolutely need a free safety like Buda Baker because you don't want... I don't think you want Jair Brown playing center field like that. I think both he and Hafunga are... Strong safeties are guys who can play half of half the field. Yeah, I mean, and then I, I you know, I understand that they both want to be starters, and what that makes me wonder about is one of those guys, you know, most likely a Fonga going to be traded. But um, beyond that, you know, you got a Fonga coming off of an ACL, and you have George Odom and nothing else behind that. I mean, they bet they're going to either have to prioritize safety probably on day two or make that kind of a move for a veteran or, you know, I mean, they, they could always go sign, you know, there's still Simmons and a couple other guys out there, but I mean, Buda Baker is a difference maker. Invader 49ers says Buda Baker would be Staley's star position player. It would be interesting if the 49ers were to get a safety and put him at linebacker in the nickel defense, because I'm not that optimistic about what Devondre Campbell's going to bring to the 49ers this year. I'm open to being pleasantly surprised, but assuming he continues his downward trajectory, that it'd be interesting to get a different nickel weak side linebacker. And you could go with Hafunga. Remember once upon a time when Robert Sala moved Eric Reed to linebacker? Eric Reed yeah. hated it, but it worked. Well, I mean, and that's the trend in the league anyway, to go to yeah. these 220 pound hybrid strong safety weak side backer types and there's a couple good ones in this draft again so they could probably go get one on day three if they wanted to uh or they could just play the guys they have there but yeah i mean to me how the secondary comes together in the draft is going to be interesting because they got a lot of numbers at corner but they don't have a, a true number one they've got you know pretty they're pretty thin at safety uh and they kind of seem like they need that 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 free safety that can cover the field in the, in the, uh, in the cover three, or even just play man to man. I, I don't think they feel comfortable. At least I don't feel comfortable about Hafanga or Jair Brown in man to man. Doesn't it seem like that's what they're trying to do? Like they had Jimmy Ward who gave them the ability to play single high. Then they moved it to Sean Gibson, who was in his early thirties. And I think ever since they moved to him, it was very much a split safety team and every safety they've looked at this off season has been fast. So I think they're trying to give themselves more versatility, more speed in the secondary, which makes sense. And it would point to Buda Baker. Also, another guy, if we're talking about nickel linebackers, guy you don't have to trade for, Jamal Adams. Yeah, who's, you know, he he's really is a linebacker. Yeah. He's not he's not a safety, and he's out mm -hmm. there. 
And you never know. Maybe he's got a little bit of an axe to grind with Seattle and would want to come to the Niners. Is he worse than even... Campbell? I, I think he's better. I mean, I don't love him as a safety, but I love him as an undersized linebacker. Campbell seems to think that he was done wrong in Green Bay and he's going to have some renaissance with the Niners. I got to wait and see on that. He did say that. Well, he made it seem like he was, what, just a Sam linebacker over there? Like, wait till Dre Greenlaw comes back. What are you going to be here? Right. You know? I mean, and then the other big question with the Niners is, you know, D. Winters and and uh, Jalen Graham. I mean, do you, do the Niners like league. them? Yeah, or, the, or not? Because you know Graham bit and didn't touch the field at all. I asked uh, Wilkes about it late in the year. He's like, he you know he was a converted uh, you know kind of a hybrid safety linebacker in college. It set him back. I'm like Steve. He looked pretty damn good in the preseason. Really? I mean, this guy. You telling me this guy can't play? I I, I think we're Steve couldn't take any chances last year. His job was on the line. Maybe that was part of the reason he didn't play these guys, right? Yeah, it could be it too. That could yeah, be it. yeah. Michael McCann says, "Pay Ayuk." Here's why: run first offenses don't win Super Bowls. End of story. The team will adapt as needed, starting with Ayuk Debo trade post June one. I, I actually agreed with that. I, that 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 I agree with. Run first teams do not win Super Bowls. I'm with you on that. Um, hey, tell it to Kyle though, and his dad, because his dad won that way 25 years ago. More than that. Yeah, I mean, you got to you got to have to have a dynamic passing offense. But I mean, are we supposed to believe that the Niners won't have a dynamic passing offense? This is also a very loaded wide receiver group. Um they could they could add a wide receiver. That's even more dynamic than Ayuk. They need someone who can at least hold his own against Chris Jones. You can well, beat they, every team yeah. in the league. You can't beat Kansas City. You need someone who can hold his own. And that's what's crazy. Like, I think they need to think that way. Usually you think about, you got to match up with the teams in your division. Man, you own your division. Chris Jones is your problem. He is the reason, he's the main reason you haven't won two Super Bowls. So in the past, you could go real small at guard because Aaron Donald was the guy you were trying to match up with and he's like 285 pounds. Chris Jones is 6'6". Six, six. He just bullies your offensive line. So bringing in Feliciano was a good start. 325 pounds. Maybe someone else who's kind of big like that who can at least not get bull rushed into Purdy's face. Yeah, it is time. I mean, Shanahan said it. Um, you know, he said, "Hey, look, we've signed these guys, but we're looking to upgrade." Um, so they they don't want to be caught naked, so they re-sign their guys. But I think they're looking to upgrade at center, right guard, and right tackle. And you're right; they have to focus on Jones because he's the mismatch. What's crazy is if you go back and look at the Broncos teams that won the Super Bowl under Mike Shanahan, and look at those offensive lines: Mark Schlereth, was it Tom Nalen? The, the guys weighed like 285 across they were the definitely board. Moved, they were movement guys with yeah. Alex Gibbs. Yeah, and it was novel. It was new. It worked. That's, that does not work anymore. You cannot have an offensive line full of undersized guys who are barely 300 pounds soaking wet. Not against these defensive lines like Kansas City. So I think the Niners get it. I think the Rams get it. This one got Jonah Jackson. He's huge. John Feliciano isn't small. Aaron Banks isn't small. They may be getting it. Right. I mean, the, I, I like the Niner line on the left side. Yeah. Um, it's it's Brendel's 285. I mean, to me, the if, if you yeah. want to talk about the, the moment that was really embarrassing was the DJ Reader Cincinnati domination over Brendel. Yeah. I, I thought that was that was awful. And you that's know, what you're going to get when you play as 285 pound center in 2023. Right. right? You got to be able to run in the middle. I got a staff for you. Christian McCaffrey's yards per carry last season between the tackles inside four, four yards a carry Four. he's way too good for that. That's not, that's not because of him. That's because of Brendel and Feliciano and Burford and banks, frankly. So they should probably upgrade there. Plus they're going to, you know, here's the other thing. We're talking about offensive efficiency too. You know, they're going, every football team is going to take their shots between the tackles. So if you can't run between the tackles then become, those become wasted plays. You fall behind the chains and it puts more of a pressure on your quarterback and your tackles to pass protect. And to get yeah, everyone knows the Niners want to get outside the tackles on their run. So if you set the edge, you have a pretty good chance against the 49ers run game. 